I'm sure they murder capital right now. Murder capital? Right here. Right where I am? Right where you at. Why? Just over drugs? Drugs, money, <clears throat> territory, gang affiliation, yeah, yeah, all of it. You know, people getting kicked in, put down. We go on and on. Yeah. And it's just going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. I knew I'd picked a bad Houston hood, but damn, I didn't know it was that bad. I just got to the third ward, which everyone in Houston says is the worst part of the city. And it was bad, but I didn't know I would hear that. My God. But that's how it is in Houston. A lot of it is rough, and a lot of it is ghetto. I came to Houston in the fall of 2023 as part of a big Texas road trip. Along the way, I saw some pretty bleak stuff. A lot of San Antonio was a big mess. I saw some rural poverty that saddened me. But it was in Houston that I saw the worst of it while in this state. I spent an entire day driving around Houston's worst areas. I saw a lot of poverty in run-down areas and apparently drove into hoods I shouldn't have been in. But this was the last major city in America that I hadn't got deep into yet. And boy, was it crazy. This house, you could still smell smoke. Now, this did not burn down very long ago. That was me in the fifth ward, one of Houston's other notoriously bad pockets. It was the last of Houston's hoods I saw when I was in town. But the whole area here is pretty bleak. A lot of abandonment, neglect, Boy, oh boy, is it dangerous in here. Ah. I don't know if they burned it down on purpose or what. Jeez, this part of town is fucked up. There were many trouble spots in Houston. Some people say the entire south and east sides of Houston are has-been lands. The day I was here, I drove through three of Houston's hoods. Right here in the fifth ward, the greater east end, and the third ward. <laughs> now the third ward is just crazy. It's by far the worst pocket I saw here. The third ward isn't very big. I covered a lot of it in about an hour or so. There really isn't a lot left to be honest. Run down, burned out, squatters and thieves. A lot of it looks like everyone just left. It's kind of hard to tell if anybody lived in any of this or people were just temporarily occupying. The famous Third Ward, where crack dreams are made. Coming in here in the morning, it's about 7.15. And uh, unlike the Hispanic part of town, there ain't nobody up here. At least not yet. It is quiet on this street. It's good for me. I don't need no trouble. Now, speaking of dangerous, it's time to talk about Aura. They're a sponsor of this video. 
So I got a phone call from my bank one time and they're like, did you buy three flat screen TVs at a Walmart in LA? I was like, no. Turns out my card had been hacked by one of those wireless RFID things. It happens to everyone. This video is sponsored by Aura. I wanted to tell you guys about them because I think we can all benefit by having our identity protected. But who can you trust? Aura has been called the best by Forbes, US News, Money Magazine, everyone. They're the best and totally legit at protecting us from identity theft, fraud, and other online threats. Baby boomers are the number one demographic targeted. The link to Aura is in the description. You get a free two week trial and you can cancel anytime after that. And here's what you get. Safe browsing tools. You get ID theft monitoring. And they're gonna check your credit and tell you if there's anything suspicious. And they'll even help you eliminate all those annoying spam calls. You mean I can eliminate spam calls? Well, that alone's worth the price, right? It's too bad that in today's world, we have to worry about protecting ourselves like this, but that's the reality of the world we live in. We need protection. Try Aura. I bet you're gonna love it. Now back to the Houston video. You're probably aware, Houston's really dangerous. Not as bad as places like Baltimore or St. Louis, but it's up there. Technically, Houston ranks 40th in the country on a per capita basis. It's about as crime ridden here as it is in Oakland. There were more than 400 murders here last year. People in Houston have a 1 in 80 chance of being attacked, raped, shot, or killed. And about 1 in 13 people here is robbed every year. I heard the robbery rate in Houston's like double the next closest Texas city. On this street, I think just about every single person is either a criminal or a victim. Or both. school that's abandoned. Houston's always had crime. The 80s and 90s were bad everywhere in the country for gun violence. Houston was no different. There was a big oil crash in the late 80s, and that put a lot of people out of work here, which made everything worse. And now, and today, everybody wants to fight and smoke weed and party and not be responsible and teach their kids to stay out of trouble. Uh-uh. Now, I was here in the third ward where I met Jake. I was just driving around recording, and he came across Jake as he was scrapping for cash. To be honest, I think me, Jake, and his homegirl were the only three people up at eight in the morning. What happened to this street, man? Huh? What happened to this street? Like, it's all, like, is this damage from the hurricane or what? This whole block is fucked up. No, it, it's not damage, it's the third ward. It's just the third ward? Can I ask you a couple questions about it? Sure. What What's up with the third ward? Why is it so famous for being, like, dangerous? I don't know why it's famous for being dangerous. I guess there's a lot of drug trafficking going on. Just drugs? Yeah, drugs is the main thing. What are you trying to do right now? Get scrapped for some money? Yeah. Hey. Ooh. What's your name? My name Jake. Jake? Mm -hmm. I'm Nick. Nice to meet you. So how long has it been like this in the third ward? It's been like this for years. It's just, just bad in here. Yeah? Why is it so bad? Drugs. Uh, everybody seems like they're showing the next generation the same thing. It's just getting worse and worse. It ain't, I don't see it improving. Since I got out of school, it's, like it's getting worse and worse, and I, it's gonna get worse than it. But, you from here? Yes, sir. What do they gotta do to fix this shit? Uh, get rid of a lot of drug traffickers out of here. I think that's what they need to do. 
put more things out here for the kids to do besides just putting a park, you know, park alone. You don't see nobody in there. This is like it's like this majority of the time. And if it is somebody, then it's people who are doing drugs or, or selling drugs. They sit right there and all day long. The kids don't even want to come in. So it's bad. And how dangerous is it in here? Like, is it that dangerous for me to be driving through here in the morning? Or? Especially with a camera. You think so? <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they, ain't, they ain't really just got up and got to moving around, but when they get up and start moving around, people start seeing it, and they're going to have a problem with it. So what time is, is like, noon, one? What time do they all start getting up? Uh, say around about 2 or 3, they're going to have all, about around 2 or 3, that's when the main one's going to come in. Like gangs and stuff? There's plenty of gangs. Been a gang, been a drugs. How did you end up in this spot where you're at? Uh, I was born and raised out here. This is all I know. You know, trying to survive. I, I, I didn't got head numbers, job, did different things. Just the drugs, the drugs didn't control my life. It didn't took over. I want to get some help. It's like I, it's like I don't know what steps to take to it. What kind of drugs? Cocaine, crack, whatever. Yeah, and it's hard getting off that shit. Yeah, it's very hard. So that's a I problem. I can take back that day I did try that that first time. I swear I would take it back. Yeah. This is not it. This is it. It control your life. I it, see why they call it a controlled substance now. It is bad. Is this like one of the worst neighborhoods in Houston? <clears throat> yeah, I would say so. I would say this is the worst neighborhood in Houston. It's 6.45 in the morning. We already got the cops called. These people are broke. And the bennies are low. Texas ranks towards the bottom in how much welfare money they hand out. You can make a case. That's a good thing. Make people work. They'll stay out of trouble and learn some responsibility. Or you could say... Welfare payments help reduce crime because, well, people have more money. But as it stands right now, the poverty rate's at 14%, and that's higher than the U.S. average. Houston's actually the only big city in the country that saw its poverty rate go up after COVID. 83% of kids in this neighborhood live in poverty. That's right, 83%. Times are tough. Rental assistance is ending. COVID money and child care assistance ended. Rent's going up everywhere. There's a housing shortage. If you have about a half a million dollars, you can get a good house in Houston and you'd be okay. But if you don't, you aren't. And these people don't. Now this is a messed up street right here. You got chickens in the road. <laughs> I've talked about how Hurricane Katrina made Houston worse in other videos I've done. Houston was the main place that all the hurricane refugees fled. <laughs> they never left, and they brought in their crime and their drugs and their BS with them. Now, I don't know if this part of town is where the Nolens refugees landed, but the place does look very much like Louisiana. Louisiana border is only about 100 miles from here. worse it's all messed up looks like they're fixing part of it up though like there's a new building Right next to a former whatever that is. So I talked to my buddy Josh. I was like, I'm going to go into some of Houston's wards and show everybody what it looks like. And he was like, dude, 
If you act like you don't belong in there, you'll see what happens. There's nine millimeters gonna be flying through your windshield. <laughs> Jesus, hope not. The cops are doing their best here, I guess. But the problem is they keep catching and then releasing all the bad guys. So they just keep popping off rounds and carjacking and whatever the hell else they want to do, knowing they probably ain't going to get into trouble. And everyone always says, how are these criminals back on the streets? Low bail for a murderer? You had them behind bars. This would all go away if they served their sentences. But I'm not in charge. I wouldn't want the job anyways. Can you imagine? Here's another whole entire block. It's basically gone. Houston's a terrible place for drug trafficking and human trafficking and cartels and the gangs. My God, they think there's 20,000 gang bangers in Houston. It's probably a lot more. There's a gang here called Tango Blast. <laughs> Sounds like the name of an energy drink. I wouldn't say that to their face though. You don't need a license to carry in Texas anymore. But I spent a lot of time in Wyoming and Idaho and Montana where everybody's armed. And those people are sensible about it. Whatever. But you watch the news in Houston and there's carnage. People getting shot over arguments. Apartment complex drive-bys. People getting jacked at the gas station. A lot of people just don't even get gas at night here anymore. Sucks. One guy didn't get his fries at a Houston Jack in the Box. And he complained. He was like, where's my fries? And the chick at the drive through window was like, what? And she pulled a gun out and shot the guy from inside the drive through window. And there were kids in the car. What is happening here? Sounds like lawless Oakland. Guns are for protection. They ain't for messing around. And I'll tell you what, there's folks around this part of town, they don't act like Texans. They act like idiots. And when we secede from this country, I ain't taking none of them with me. Then I left the third ward and I went to the fifth ward. It's on the north end of town. And on the way, I went past the biggest little homeless camp I saw when I was here. It wasn't that bad. But homelessness is a real thing in Houston. Nothing like in California. I mean, you don't see giant camps and stuff. A lot of people just don't want to do anything but lay around and do drugs on Houston sidewalks. And there's nothing you can do to stop them. So don't even try. And then with the light on the corner, I saw this. And there was a wreck right there. Car wreck. Just right there. Holy shit. What is happening? <laughs> Just saw a car wreck. <laughs> she said, you ran a red light, you dumbass. Oh, I had to get out of there. Just way too much drama going on in Houston this morning. I'm telling you, Texans are decent folks and they're pretty friendly, but they are terrible drivers. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So 
So the Greater Fifth Ward, last big giant ghetto I don't think I've ever been to. The Fifth Ward is more of the same. A lot of blight and crime. But it's not nearly as bad as the Third Ward. Looks like a lot of it's even getting fixed up. There's a lot more activity in this neighborhood than I usually see this time of day. I'll tell you that. Part of Houston's problem with the schools and the naughty kids. Teachers in Texas are quitting in big numbers. They surveyed more than a thousand Texas teachers and most of them said they seriously considered quitting. Three out of four of them said that they dream about quitting on the way home from school every day and 93% had brushed up on their resumes and researched other careers. What? Good Lord. In areas like this is where a lot of the most troubled kids live. It's really sad that kids have to grow up in an area like this that can be so scary and sad. But that's the reality of the United States now. Everywhere. I think this whole neighborhood's being torn down. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, you gotta fix stuff up. But a lot of this is just straight up trashed. fixing this part of the fifth ward up I mean they're literally ripping down a lot of the old stuff just raising it to the ground to build some new stuff because it's that messed up Breeds drugs and gangs and squatters. Like all over, you see construction. I talked about how dangerous it is in Houston. And I'm going to talk about it more because you people love to hear about it and to keep your attention. Not too long ago, a guy held up a wig store and stole $300,000 in wigs. Not too far from where I am right now. He held a gun up to the business owner's head who had her one-year-old baby in her arms. Houston police officers are not happy. <laughs> but there aren't really any happy cops in America anymore. They're underpaid and underappreciated. Somebody told me that the cops have to tread lightly in Houston's hoods. There's been occasions where somebody makes a fake 911 call so they can ambush the cops. They've got automatic guns. One time, a guy used a 3D printed machine gun to blow away three Houston officers. No wonder there's 700 officers short here. There's a lot of cops here that are saying, F it, I'm retiring. I'll do it. And after I shoot him, I'll throw him in jail forever. Now, Matthew, that sidearm sure is purdy. And normally, I'd tell you to put it away, but somebody's got to lay the damn law down around here. I'm sure the hard-working Houston PD would love to have you riding shotgun with them. Like a damn Texas Ranger. seem to be in the Mexican ghetto. It's pretty Mexican. A 
final stop in Houston's hoods was on the somewhat tame east end. It looks far less worse here than it did on the other sections of town I saw. It's affordable though. Homes here are about 175 k Well, that's a lot for a lot of these people, but low compared to the rest of the country. But 17% of homes here are vacant, and that's a lot. And we have all these people who say, there aren't affordable homes anymore in America. But there's a bunch of empty homes here in Houston's hoods. Although, you probably wouldn't want to live here. Somebody told me once, if it wasn't for the energy industry, Houston would be an armpit like Philly. That's kind of mean. I heard at the Walmart in this neighborhood, there's people selling food stamps outside. What? for you not as intimidating and run down and scary as I thought it would be I've seen a lot worse but my perspective is probably different than your perspective yep there's parts of Houston that are booked up There's no denying, Houston's in a bad place. There's a lot of people here who just don't care. They don't care to get a job. They don't care about shit. And they'll do anything in broad daylight. They'll rob anything and anyone. They're desperate out here. And they don't value human life. And that is something that we need to fix. But how? I don't think these people even listen to any reason. Crazy. I'm scared to even see what it'll be like with my kids here 15, 20 years from now. I'm scared. I can't even imagine. It's so hard. It's like, what is it going to be like then? Everybody got guns. Don't nobody fight no more. Crazy. Crazy. You mean they don't fight with fists, they fight no. with guns? No, it's, it's gun play now. It's like they're back in the Western days. Yeah. And how kids are just getting guns just anywhere, it's easy. It's real easy. So they grow up. I done seen some of these kids out here with some Grand Theft Auto guns. And it tripped me out. What's a Grand Theft Auto gun? Like, From the game? M16, the video game, the kind of guns they got on them, and Call of Duty, the kind of guns they got them out here now. Like, like flooded out here like that now. It's like. Why? Where do they get those? Suppressors and, I don't know. I don't know where they're getting from, but they get, it's, it's plenty of it in here. And they're using it to control turf and like to just Road be territory turf. I'm trying to put a name up for this show. All kinds of stuff, man. It's bad, right? I got shot in here for no reason. You got shot in here? In, in Third Ward for no reason. Twice. Where'd you get shot at? Right here in my shoulder and in my chest. For just walking around? Nah, a guy was having some girlfriend issues and he, me and him had words a lot, so he just figured he'd take it out on me. He told me it was a fight and it wasn't a fight, it was a shoot. Yeah. I got shot, so. I ended up coming right back in here. So what do you, anyway, yeah man, I appreciate your time, dude. All right, cool, thanks. All right, man. I hope something changed. Me too. Hey, you have a nice day, man. Later, man.
labor capital of the world, or the country, in this neighborhood right here. 2803, going to the next spot. <laughs> He's trying to get me to come back down there, but I ain't going down there. <laughs> He's like, hey, come here. I don't think so. Kids with machine guns running around here. What is going on? They're all in bed right now. Is it 7.37? Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country. And I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.